Hey, did you know that there are three stages of real estate investing? Yep, there are. Most people want to skip to the last one before they actually do the first two. We're going to get to all of those today on the show. Look, if you're new to real estate investing, there's one important concept you need to grasp in order to be successful long term. Again, we will get to that in just a second. First of all, though, if you're new here, welcome. I'm Clayton Morris, longtime real estate investor. I'm the founder of Morris Invest, which is a full service rental real estate company. I've done thousands of real estate deals. And one thing I had to learn early on was that I had to overcome my idea that cash flow at this stage was the most important thing. See, most people who get into real estate investing have one thing in mind, cash flow. When I go to real estate meetings or I talk to new investors for the first time, it's all about cash flow. They probably watch some fancy Instagram videos with guys in corporate jets flying around in their fancy Lamborghinis and they're like cash flow and they swim in a big pile of cash like Scrooge McDuck style. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen those. Of course, cash flow is the ultimate goal in this process, the end goal. But if you're just starting out and you're a new real estate investor, you might want to adjust your approach. Don't get ahead of yourself. You can certainly have cash flow, but maybe just not immediately, not at the very beginning. Now, there are a couple steps before you get there, and I want to go over those right now. This idea transformed my life. It's based off of a book by Gary Keller called The Millionaire Real Estate Investor. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend that you read it. I'll have a link below in the show notes to go and grab that book. It's all about gaining wealth through real estate investing. It was a book that I read a number of years ago in my investing journey, and it transformed my life. In this book, Keller discusses the three stages of real estate investing. Now, this concept is paramount, and it guided me for years. I've regurgitated it and talked about it at length to our audience and to my investors, that many new investors look at this process in reverse, and they quickly become discouraged by the process. You have to understand these three stages. You must understand these three stages in order to meet your end goal. So these stages are as follows. Number one, buy. Number two, own. And number three, cash flow. Now I'm going to go through each of these three stages. So if you're a new investor, you should be in the first stage of your journey right now, where you put your efforts into buying property, acquiring assets. You shouldn't be necessarily concerned with making money. Now, I know that sounds counterintuitive to your main goal, but please bear with me and listen to this entire process because this stage, the buying stage, is all about purchasing properties in order to increase your net worth. Remember, rich people, wealthy people, they don't look in terms of how much cash they have in their wallet to show their wealth, right? They don't look at how many liabilities they have to show a sign of their wealth. Most Middle-class Americans think of the American dream as buying a house that now they're in debt to. They buy a car that now they're in debt to. They have a 401k, which is a terrible retirement vehicle, and that's all they have. Of course, you don't want to be in the hole either. Of course, most wealthy people always want to look at their net worth. Wealthy people judge their value and their success by their net worth. How many assets do they have in the asset column? Now, I'm not even talking about having them paid off. Like how many assets have increased my net worth in that column? Because when I own a piece of real estate, even if I have leverage on it, I still get the tax benefits of that purchase. So I might not fully own it outright yet. I might not be at the cash flowing stage, but I'm in the buying column. I'm in the net worth column. That item has now been added to my net worth. Of course, you don't want to be in the hole either. You don't want to be massively over leveraged and in debt. You need to make sure that your expenses are covered when you acquire real estate. And you need to do the math to make sure you're making a solid investment. So I'm not asking you to go into debt where the cash flow doesn't make sense. I want you to make sure that, as Gary Keller points out, that after all of your expenses are paid, after everything is taken care of on this property, okay, if you take out 40% for, for repairs and expenses and taxes and you plan all of that out in your column, I want to make sure that you're cash flowing at least $100 over your expenses. All of your expenses are covered, and then you're cash flowing at least $100. Now, Gary Keller in his book says it cash flowing at least $1 over that. And I think that's a little, a little too close. Personally, I wouldn't mind being at two or $300 above those numbers, right? You've taken care of all of your expenses. You put your expenses in the bank to, in case you have to fix a water heater at some point or a tenant moves out of the property and you have a vacancy for a month and you've got to pay property taxes or those types of things. You need to set that money aside. Okay, once you've done that, are you able to cash flow just a little bit above that then? A hundred bucks, 200 bucks. That's a smart investment. 
Now, the second stage of real estate investing is when you actually own your properties outright. Okay, remember, first stage is buying. Okay, you're not concerned yet about the cash flow. You're adding assets to your asset column. Now, the second, of course, is owning them outright. Now, you've paid back your lender, whether that's a traditional bank loan, you've got a non-recourse loan, etc. Private lender, it doesn't matter. Okay, now you own them outright. Hallelujah, let's burn the mortgage. We're excited about it, right? Now, the last stage, the stage you've been waiting for, is the cash flow stage. Now, Gary Keller says, you know, buy a million, own a million, cash flow a million. And although I admire him, I actually think one million is just an arbitrary number and that you can achieve financial freedom in a more attainable way. I recommend finding your unique freedom number to see what works for you. You know, what are your monthly expenses? How much cash flow would you need to live financially free? We have a free cheat sheet that we give away on our website. We'll have a link below for you to grab it. It's totally free. It's like three pages long. It's our freedom cheat sheet. Go and grab it at morrisinvest.com slash freedom. Now, once you get the cash flow stage, you can easily rinse and repeat this whole process. Most smart investors buy until they die. Why is that? The tax man. The tax implications of owning real estate are enormous, right? So if you buy three rental properties at a stage in your life, now you've paid them all off, okay? And now they're cash flowing and you're getting the full cash flow from the tenants in those properties. That's all rental income. But what are your offsets? What taxable offsets do you have for the IRS to offset that new income that you've got? That's why we buy until we die. Because as we acquire new rental properties, we get to write those off as expenses on our taxes that offsets the income from those newly cash flowing tenant properties that are fully paid off in cash flowing. So I hope this video has encouraged you to move towards financial freedom and to be patient in your process. What are your thoughts on the three stages of real estate investing? Tell me below in the comments and don't forget to check out our next video right here.